Hey guys, and welcome to this tutorial on Katia v5. Uh, this video will be focusing on an introduction to Katia, uh, so the real basics of the program, uh, maybe for people who have never used it before or who have had very limited experience. Uh, this is just to try and get uh, a good grip of the actual program itself. So what I'll be taking you through today uh, is, is the real bare bones as such. So I'll be going through model manipulation. Uh, I'll be talking about the tree down beside the compass the toolbars on the bottom and the right, uh, and also some of the options uh, along the top. So first things first, uh, how we manipulate models in Katia. Um, generally we need a three button mouse, which I'm pretty sure everyone has these days. Uh, the way we actually kind of manipulate, so to pan the model, we will go left and right, up and down like so. All you need to do is click the middle mouse button for this. So mid middle mouse button will uh, pan the model. If you hold the right hand mouse button down with it, you can rotate it. You'll see this circle uh, trying to kind of act a bit like a, like a sphere, showing you how you're actually manipulating it. Now, if you release the right hand mouse button whilst keeping your finger on the middle button, this will let you zoom in and out. It really is that simple. Uh, it takes a bit to get used to, though, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to manipulate models nice and easily. What I will say um, when you're rotating the model, you can see the crosshairs uh, at that in the middle there, that will show you where you're rotating the model about. So when I rotate it, it rotates it around that axis in the center. So if I were to zoom in, like so, and rotate it, I can choose where I want to rotate it but around by clicking anywhere on the model. So if I was to click over here, it will set that as the position to actually rotate it around. As you can see, if I go to the middle here or the, or the front, it doesn't rotate as easily if I click on here it rotates very very nicely so it's something that uh, is quite useful to know if you are zoomed in on a, on a model uh, it's good to know that if you click with the middle mouse button you can make it much easier to rotate if you don't happen to have a, a mouse handy uh, you can always use the compass up in the top right here so this is uh, works on kind of axes planes uh, and such so you've got a plane there you can move it up and around or you can move it around rotate it around an axis or along a pl or, or along an axis it's just a different way of uh, actually manipulating the model without a three-point mouse because it is quite difficult without it so over on the left here then what we have is the design tree or the product structure depending on what you want to say um, this model here is an assembly uh, so you can see quite a few bits of it but what the actual design tree does it allows you to keep a good track of what you're doing on the screen. The two are very much uh, integrated together. So when I highlight, you can see as I highlight something on the tree, it highlights it on the model. If I highlight something on the model, it will highlight it on the tree. It's to help you give it a more of a visual uh, and, and more efficient way of, uh, of working. So there's another way which these two are quite interrelated. So if I was to uh, right click on, on one of the tree bits, it opens a, a command bar. There's plenty of options which we can um, explore in a later date. But one of the two, two of the commands, which are these two here, which are really, really useful. So we've got center graph and reframe on. So center graph is uh, directed at the design tree. Reframe on is designed on the model. What I mean by that is if I right click on the fuselage and put reframe on, it will zoom in on a particular component on the model. So if I was to choose something else, it will reframe on wherever it is. At the same time, if I were to find something on the actual model, like this, right click on it and say center graph, it will open up the design tree to the point which I selected. So that's what I selected. It's found it. It's a very, very useful thing to have. So if you are in the, in the depths of a giant assembly like this, it's easy to find something very, very quickly on the tree rather than having to trek through it. So those two are very much interleaved. Um, the design tree has got a lot of functions uh, and we'll probably be kind of touching on it bit by bit as we go through the series. Katia works with, uh, with, with several workbenches because it's such a vast program. Uh, what they do is split it up into small sections uh, to work in. So like I said, we are currently in assembly design uh, with this assembly here. And the way I know that is by the top right here. So up at the top right is a little icon hover over it, it says assembly design. Now, this is something quite important. If you ever get stuck where you are in a particular or, or doing something and all of a sudden your icons disappear or go completely different, just check this little icon here 
and it will find uh, it will tell you what you're in and I guarantee you nine times out of ten that's probably what's accidentally changed and the way we navigate through these different work pages is by the start menu so over here is a start menu we've got lots of different areas in which we can actually kind of go to uh, this series is going to be focusing on uh, just a few so we're going to be focusing on part assembly and sketcher as well as shape and possibly some machining further down the line and these these three really you can do a lot with them uh, and design very very complex parts uh, to to even to some great accuracy so if we were to move about if you're in a particular part you just pop here that'll take you to part design assembly design etc this is going to be as you start playing with it you'll kind of become more confident with moving about uh, in the different um, workbenches so I'll just talk about the uh, the toolbars uh, for a second then. So if you look to the right here, the toolbars on the right are generally specific to the workbench we're in. So we're in assembly design, so all these ones here are specific to the assembly design workbench. Now generally there are a lot more than this uh, and they're generally hidden down the bottom. So if you want to get all of them, just pull them up and you get all of them actually coming up. And like I said, this will be going through this uh, at a later date, but this is to go on the toolbars themselves. Toolbars can be manipulated uh, as you would a normal program. If you hold the shift whilst you're holding onto them, you can create a, uh, it will go horizontal rather than vertical. They're all uh, very, very flexible, so you can put them wherever you want. You can put them on the top bar, you can put them on the bottom, you can put them wherever you like, um, and it really is up to you. Uh, you can sprawl across the screen like I do generally. It's, it's not really a, a problem at all. So if you, are, if you do accidentally uh, get rid of them, don't worry, don't panic. All you need to do is go to your tools, go to customize, and go to your toolbars, and just go to restore position. Okay, and that will bring back all of the toolbars for this workbench, put them back, probably sprawl them all over the place. They'll probably be back down here, but just in case you ever, ever lose one, they'll be down there. Toolbars on the bottom here are generally more generic. So we've got the new, save, all that down there, undo. And we've got other ones, for example, like these ones here are function ones. You can create design t uh, tables and parameters. Uh, but we'll go be going into those in the uh, in the future. We've also got these ones. These are different ways you can, uh, you can play around with them. So you've got uh, different ways of manipulating them. You can use your rotate, your pan, and your zoom in and your zoom out, again, if you don't have a, uh, a mouse on you. We've got uh, other functions here or operations, such as the multi-view, um, the, uh, the views icon, which, uh, which you can do. I will note as well, uh, anything on a toolbar with a little arrow, a little black arrow like that, it means you can expand it. And when you expand it, you'll usually get a load of different options, which will allow you to do different things. So. What I would do is, like, is, is rather than going through these, what I would say is just have a play with them. Generally, they're to do with the actual uh, view of it itself. Now, another way that uh, Katia works is by the hide show operation, which is very, very useful. So uh, if I were to try and have a look underneath here, what I can do is I can right click on the tree or I can right click on the model and click on hide show. And that will hide the actual component in question. I can also just press this icon here, so I can highlight it, click on the hide show, and it will hide it. And what that does is it basically banishes it to another dimension, uh, and that other dimension is in this what visible space. So you've got the visible dimension and you've got the hidden dimension as such. Uh, so you click that, all of this here is what is in the models, but is hidden. Uh, and that will allow you to, if you want to find something very quickly, you can see they're just here, right click, hide show or press the button and they'll come back in. So they exist in here or they exist in here and that's just a, a way of managing stuff that is like sketches which are not necessarily needed for the model like this and it just cleans it up makes it much more manageable. So there are also uh, these buttons here which are very very useful again I'll be going into these a bit more detail further on um, but all these here are generally much more generic uh, toolbars. So before we finish then, what I'll do is I'll just go through the uh, the toolbar at the top. Um, like uh, any Windows program, uh, Katia works with a, with a file, so you've got all the save from, save as, new and all that stuff. 
uh, and then edit with an undo and repeat, things like that. View, view generally has uh, all of the actual operations you do down here uh, and a few more such as toolbars, you can set the toolbars that you want in this particular view uh, and it contains lots of other, other uh, options to do with the actual view of your model. So what I would say is that uh, to have a play around with these because it's the best way to learn uh, on how to do things, but these will actually control how you view the model. The insert has uh, all of the actual operations specific to a particular workbench. So here we are in the center of design. We have uh, all of the ones we see over here in this bar here. So you can also go to, to this bar here if these ones happen to be non-existent or you can't find them or you just want to use this bar instead. So they're all here as well. The tools bar uh, takes or contains lots of different uh, options and uh, and such but the most useful is the options pad here and uh, what this does is it's arranged exactly the same way as the uh, the start menu so each sub uh, sub area has a different part which has its own set of options uh, again what I would do is recommend is you just go on to here have a look at what you can do the major ones that you'll be using like I said is the general mechanical and shape so general, for example, you can go to the display. Uh, you can change things like your visualization, your background colors. Uh, you can change the performance and how your computer handles everything. So there's loads of stuff you can have a look at. And what I would do is just uh, get acquainted with it as much as you possibly can. So finally, the uh, the help bar. Uh, Katia V5 does have a, an extensive user companion uh, and uh, tutorials on specific parts. So if at any point there is a little something that I've missed out, yeah, you can pop there and they've got loads of different tutorials uh, on Katia itself. Okay guys, well thank you for tuning into this uh, video on Katia V5. Uh, the next video will be on the sketching, so we'll actually be going into some part design and start uh, learning about how we actually begin to model parts from the ground up. So please do tune into that if you uh, wish to know a bit more. Uh, if there are any questions, you can always leave it down in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and cheerio.